Castle Howard's a television veteran nowadays. This particular autumn morning is the setting for a flight which, like all balloon trips, will be something of a mystery tour. Balloonists generally get up before daybreak to catch the calm air. After that, they're at the mercy of the winds for the few hours they can expect the flight to last. From here, the prevailing winds will normally carry a balloon away to the northeast, where the rich and fertile Vale of Pickering gives way to today's objective, the harsher uplands of the North York Moors. The jeep, which brings the equipment to the stately home, will also be in attendance to retrieve it when it comes down, if the roads happen to lead to the same place as the air currents. But the first job is one of assembly, hooking up the wicker basket to the nylon envelope which lifts the balloon. There are two men in the crew. Ray Taylor works for the Countryside Commission. He's got the local knowledge and he's the guide. And Ian MacDonald is the pilot, the captain effectively, for the expedition. Now the pilot light's already connected. That's just a vapour offtake from the top of the cylinder and that's on all the time. This one is the main liquid propane supply. Dust cap comes off. And we connect the pipe to the cylinder, like that. Turn on the tap from the cylinder. And make sure we've got pressure. And the pressure's good. I'll just check we've got it through supply. A petrol-driven fan is in action first, pumping cold air to open up the envelope. Once he's aloft, the pilot's only real control over the balloon will be the ability to gain or lose height. So, there's a large valve at the very top of the balloon, a piece of nylon inside the envelope which covers a circular hole through which hot air can be released in a controlled way. Part of the crucial preparation for pilot Ian MacDonald is to check the ropes that operate this valve. That's the valve looking like a rising sun in the half-inflated envelope. And then it's time for the hot air, blasted in by gas burners equivalent in power to 200 kitchen stoves. OK, hands on. By the time the balloon's upright, Ian MacDonald is anxious for lift-off. Filming has already cost precious early morning hours. He manoeuvres it into position. I'm ready any time now I hear from John. How long will it take? About five minutes? Fine. OK. A third passenger is going on board a balloon whose wicker basket was designed for two. He's on only his second flight in a balloon, and he'll spend more time outside the basket than in. Sid Peru, caving and mountaineering filmmaker, perches on a platform mounted at the side. Seconds now to lift off. Okay, we're going. Check, 8.50 on my watch, write it on the board, please. Do you have a pen? There should be one in there somewhere. Castle Howard was built to the designs of someone who was quite unhindered by a knowledge of architecture. Sir John Vanborough was an ex-soldier and writer of bawdy comedies. The new St Paul's Cathedral had a dome on it, so he put one here, 
on top of his stark new building on what was then the bare Yorkshire hillside. That was over 250 years ago. Now Castle Howard is one of Britain's most in-demand stately homes. Right, at least we cleared the first hurdle, we're clear of the house. Okay. <laughs> Pretty staggering, isn't it, Ian, to think that just about everything except the actual shape of the land mm. has been shaped by man. That's right. Since the park was laid out about 200 years ago, trees have come, buildings have mellowed into the landscape. In a state like this, still over 10,000 acres, used to be near 17,000 acres. Let me just give another burn, Ray, um, to stop this descent. The house is looking fantastic. Presumably at that time, in what, the 1750s would that be? It would have been today's equivalent of, of concrete blocks, in a sense. Yes, it was as, as revolutionary as centre point in its time. And is that um, a river, Ray, originally, or is that a man-made lake completely? It was a stream or originally, but it uh, was improved by Vanborough to create the sort of silver landscape that was popular. It's a shame, really, that the original designers couldn't see it from this particular angle because it really looks good. As the balloon soars away on the air currents, the earthbound jeep follows as best it can. There is radio contact between them, but it's easier to chase what you can see. Happily, the road here runs parallel to the flight path. Back in the air, Yorkshire is all new territory for Ian MacDonald, while for Ray Taylor, the flight's a chance to relish a favourite bit of landscape from a fresh angle. You can see a pigeon flying through the trees down there. Yes. <laughs> many of these trees were planted in accordance with a plan prepared about 1770, and many of the trees have now reached the end of their useful life. I see. Will they now be, in fact, um, felled and they replanted? Are, they are being. George Howard, the uh, present owner of the estate, is uh, going out of his way to recreate the landscape as it was at the time of that plan. Right, it will take, what, 250 years, I suppose, to recreate from no, it now? It should be a bit more mature a bit before that. I ought to just have a quick word with the retrieve crew, I think, oh, on good. the radio. So, where are we going? Have oh, you got a track? Uh, no, let me just get a bit of height on in a second. That's uh, 020 we're heading at the moment. I'll just put a bit more gas in. Jeep from Balloon, do you read? Hello, Balloon. Receiving you loud and clear. Come in, please. Over. Uh, Roger, Jeep. Loud and clear also. Uh, we just passed over the scarp and we're descending now onto the Vale of Pickering. Do you have us in sight? Over. Yes, we have you in sight. Something like a mile behind. I'm following you due north. Over. Look how those villages are on a straight line. Is there any particular reason for that, Ray? They're following the Roman road that ah. uh, went from Malton, which was the old Roman settlement of Deventio, to uh, Oldbury near mm. Boroughbridge. It's interesting that the, the later villages that came probably were established probably during Anglo-Saxon times then followed the roads, mm. not often actually on the roads. If you look, the old part of the village is just as aside from the road. Mm. These villages therefore have names like Appleton Le Street mm. and Barton Le Street. Uh, Barton comes from the same derivation as, as our word barley, meaning a corn growing area. So it's a so corn corn growing area by the old Roman road, is that right? Spot on. I see. Spot on. basket and an empty camera platform. Our third man's been exploring. Sid Peru's unique shots of ballooning in close-up come from a unique camera position suspended on a climbing rope from the crown of the balloon. He had to get special permission for this. The authorities weren't worried that he might hurt himself falling out so much as that he might fall on something. 
The extra payload and its unusual placing is just enough to tilt the balloon. Ian McDonnell is flying it near the limit of its capabilities. Beneath them now is the Vale of Pickering. Its smooth, sleek terrain generally means a comparatively smooth ride above. We're tracking quite hard left now. Yeah, uh, but I feel wind on my face. We're so going to go the other way in a minute. Okay. As we're travelling at the speed of the wind, that means we must be changing direction. Right. Right, but the right. well, there's always a delayed reaction of about 10, 15 seconds as we take up the new direction. Because of the momentum of the balloon, it's so large, it's 77,000 cubic feet. It can't just turn abruptly, it's got to just take up the new direction gently. Also, Ray, look, we are starting to slow down, which uh, bears out the point I made earlier about the slower winds at lower levels. We're slowing right down now, look. This often happens there, you see, because the winds are fairly unpredictable on a day like this when it's uh, not very windy. The Vale of Pickering is so level because it was once the bottom of a spacious lake. If we go down low, we'll uh, really be able to see just how flat this plane is. It's rather deceptive from up here, but from very low, I can assure you that it really is flat. All right, well, we're starting down now then, Ray. Uh, there are no animals that I can see or villages close by on our track, so we should be able to get right down to about 200 feet all being well. Here we go. I'm giving a few of what I call retro burns, which just arrests that rate of descent. If you didn't give those check burns from time to time, the rate of descent would, of course, build up to an unacceptable level, and we wouldn't be able to control ourselves when we got just above the hedges. In other words, if I want to be slowing down my descent in 15 seconds, I've got to burn now to achieve that. Ballooning is the sociable way to fly. Even if your overhead arrival in the middle of nowhere can take people by surprise. Good morning. In the open farmland, without traffic hold-ups or buildings to block the view, the jeep has no difficulty keeping the balloon in sight. So far, so good. rather interesting to see from this height variations in the colour even within the fields. What would that be? That in all probability is the different drainage because as this was a lake bed it was poorly drained originally. There is for example just a few miles further east from here uh, uh, some villages called Marish which mm. is a, an old word uh, comparable to our word marsh. And I as see. The land, as the land was drained uh, so it came uh, under cultivation and now is very fine fertile land. Where is Pickering from here? Pickering is over to the northeast. Um, you can just see, I see a it. fleck of smoke over there. Oh yes, that's below the horizon. Is yes, that Pickering? Yes. Right. You ought to try and get yep. to where the retrieve again, if possible. Okay, fine. Jeep from balloon over. Do you have us in sight? Over. Sorry, we missed the message. Uh, Roger. Do you have us in sight? Over. Okay. We cannot hear you. It's a problem here, chaps. The town of Pickering ahead, the moors and forests beyond. Not a good time to lose radio contact. Uh, Sid, I'd like you in when you're ready, please. Sid Peru feels safer clipped onto his rope than clambering over the wickerwork in mid-air. But the rules say he has to be in the basket over built-up areas. And the balloon has to climb to 2,000 feet. It's beginning to get busy up there. I'm going to change scenes now. Stand by. Right, get ready. I want both of those out now. You have to do these as well. Velcro. Straight across. To get back, Sid first has to come down the outer rope to a point below the basket, 
change ropes and then up. The first time this complicated manoeuvre has been done in the air. He also has to remember what to unclip. Christ, don't get it off. Don't take it off. Pardon, sir? I said I'm just I'm not unclipping myself, I'm unclipping the camera. No, OK. So All right. I don't know how long you're going to get out there, because we're using the gas quite fast now. That one wasn't as full as we thought it was. Pickering's an ancient threshold at once linking and holding apart the fruitful plain and the moors looking down at it. It's also a threshold for the balloonists and for the same reasons, the end of the gentle airs of the Vale of Pickering. Conqueror built a castle here to keep an eye on troublesome Yorkshiremen. From the air, it looks like an educational model of a classic Norman Mott and Bailey. The prevailing winds will take the balloon away to the north, where the high moors are cut by deep valleys and have their own unpredictable air currents. Pickering was also a point of decision for the jeep, and in towns, the buildings hide balloons. Balloon from jeep, do you receive me, over? Balloon from jeep, come in please, over. A jeep from balloon, go ahead. Balloon from jeep, uh, can you give us your position please, over. Uh, Roger jeep, uh, we've passed beyond Pickering, and we're drifting north now. Uh, we look as if we're heading towards Newtondale. OK, uh, we'll take this yellow road up here, past Leveson Station, Fine. and up this yellow road and around to Needle Point, and we'll take it from there, OK? Yeah, I got that. Is planted, Ray? The first ones were planted in the 1920s, but as you can see from the different stages of the growth of them, they've been planted on regular cycle ever since. The trees cover the lower slopes and tops of Newtondale in a large expanse of forestry. There are differing views of whether this improves the scenery, but it certainly means there are no landing places for a balloon until the high tops are reached. Gas is beginning to run low, but there's a draft which funnels along the valley. That's fine, we're going perfectly up it now. I'll try and stay at this height or That is lower. magnificent. Do you want to go lower or not? Oh, if you can go a bit lower, yes, please. <sighs> OK. Notice how we're following this valley wind. Can you see that? We're just going left and right. This was one of the first railways in the world. George Stevenson started it after the Manchester-Liverpool railway. What date would that be? 1836. Yes. Uh, the idea was to connect the port of Whitby with the very rich agricultural land around Pickering. Yes. It's now 
privately owned and run as a, as a steam railway yes. by the North Yorkshire Moors Railway Society. And very popular, I'm sure. It is. The valley makes a fine natural pass for the railway, but the wind has got other ideas for the balloon. I'm not sure if I can actually go into the valley now. I mean, I can go down, I'm not sure if I follow the contour or not. We're going a bit right. Are going to come no way you can get left? <coughs> no. OK. I'll do my best, don't worry, okay. I'll do my best. But I just want to leave the options open. Fine, good. But over on the left-hand side of the valley, there are no options. The jeep has to stick to the road. The tower down there is called Skelton Tower, built by the Reverend Skelton in about the 1840s. Some people say it was to write his sermons in, but others say it was for other purposes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Sounds intriguing. I guess we're just over the top, are we? Um, we'll have a look. Sheep running down there. Now we've got wind on the left, so we're going to go right, I'm afraid. He's in the wrong position. If I go this way, yeah. I go up You're the okay. scarp, and I've got power lines. You're I've okay. got one chance. No, the power lines go all the way along. Difficult to retrieve, but no problem with okay, landing. Fine, that's what I want to know. Okay, okay, Ray. That's, it's just that I haven't uh, seen that map too well. No, as you know, fine. You've done a recce on the ground. No I'm problem. Sure it's all right. Okay, Andrew. Should get a fairly good view from the little point down here. Yeah. I don't think the wind's changed. Yeah, it could be right, actually. I think we're on the wrong side of the valley. Let's think. We're here, aren't we? And if they're over there, there's no roads through. Mm. Now we'll have to go all the way around. Yeah. I suppose it's back to the jeep. Yeah. yeah OK. As the crow flies, the balloon's only about three miles away. By the last road crossing the valley, it's more than 15 and ten of those are tortuous forest track. Look, there's filing, filing belts over there, Ray. So it is. Castle Howard to Filingdale is not a bad flight. <laughs> That's right, it's a beautiful ending, isn't it? Ray, down on, on the uh, right here. This is called the Hole of Hawkeye. It's fascinating origins because it was really from stream seepage through the rocks. And you know the way if you build a, um, a dig a hole on the beach, the water seeps out and causes it to collapse. Well, that's more or less what's happened here on a quite gigantic scale. Speed up as we go higher. We'll probably come down with a downdraft. It's a magnificent view. Just treasure this. This is perfect, Sid, from the point of view of views. Are you treasuring it, Sid? Yeah. <laughs> we're coming straight onto that plateau, aren't we? Super place to land. We've yes. no idea how we'd get a retrieve from there. This is miles from the road. Well, the important thing is to get down actually before that road because that's the last really good road before the sea. We're going to have to land fairly soon. We're heading straight for Filingdale, Sid. I'm afraid. You're all right at the moment. I'll go beyond the ravine and land at the other side. I bet Filingdales didn't expect to have yet another sphere on their horizon today. That's right. We're about the same size, aren't we, by the look of it? No, they're actually quite a lot bigger. We're about 50 feet across and oh. they're 150 feet yes. across. OK, so if we can get back in now, please, when you're ready. I'll have to land before the main road and the wires. That's our last chance. Give them a hand.
The recovery crew has backtracked furiously to the valley crossing point at Levisham Station. Funny how once you're late, everything goes against you. Get inside. Come on. Now stand by for landing shortly. Stand clear. Well, clear this line, Ray, please. Which way do you, where do you want me? Just, I just want you to be well clear of the rip line. Okay. I should be pointing this way. Stand in front of me, please. You are clear. I'm coming off on both sides. Right, coming down now, chaps. It's all right. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, one of you can get out. Onto the crown line. Onto the crown line, yeah. Hold it down. Push. Come on. No. Ballooning's all about improvisation, using whatever energy comes to hand, and about the funny kind of freedom that seems to come from being completely dependent on the elements. Luckily, even in the remotest location, a balloon can be relied on to draw a crowd, especially when it comes down. In this case, a school walking party. Anything's possible except planning, even a classic flight across one of the best bits of Yorkshire. And if your recovery team gets left behind, there are always other ways of getting home. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks, lads. Okay. <laughs>